it's the you know it's the environment that you create in the house yeah right yes. it, first of all we find it such a taboo to talk about finances in the house yes. most family it's not about an indian family i think it's all over the world that if a if a kid asks you for a papa or mom how much do you earn yeah so why do you want to know they'll make, they'll it's come in defense yeah. Yeah. right yeah. it's not yes. your business yeah. and then what happens to the kid the next time the kid will find it you know he will not ask that he or she will not ask that question correct because now he or she has been given the thought that asking a question about finance is something which should is not entertained in the house hi we are the confident communicator and i am seema mehta along with my partner deepma jadeja welcome to imperfect parenting together let's get on a journey of discovering kindness success and happiness courageously fearlessly and by holding ourselves to a standard of grace not perfection it is our mission at the confident communicator to empower kids and adults discover their own uniqueness through our coaching training and soft skills program we welcome you to a new chapter of imperfect parenting a series dedicated to discovering our own uniqueness without judgment by chiseling away all superfluous materials within ourselves hi everyone uh, this is seema mehta from the confident communicator along with my partner deepma jadeja um, you know we we've talked about financial planning uh, several times um, we've talked about creating a will several times we've talked about why financial financial planning is important we've had other guests who have come on our imperfect parenting show uh, and you know um, it's so interesting that a lot of people actually got back to us saying that yes we understand the reasons why financial planning is important but let's get to the next step which is how do we do that and what exactly are the steps that we should take um last time we spoke to one of our guests about creating a will where we said will should not be looked at as an inauspicious conversation about death it should be talked about as a financial tool and and it so happened that we had a great conversation with our next guest uh, meeta gupta who is a financial coach and consultant and she has her own company called mula for women and uh, she she said that actually the the base if you think of financial planning as a triangle the base of financial planning is actually starting with a will so meeta let's get started from there only because that's the last conversation we had with you and it was so interesting that you are such a champion for uh, advocating the idea of empowering women uh, to be financially uh you know independent and strong it, it has been seen um statistically that women don't seem to be getting as involved uh in the whole financial planning they leave it to their father they leave it to their husband or their son and i think it's time that women actually kind of step in and we talked about that ad remember that ad we talked about maybe you can talk a little bit about that and we can start the conversation from there welcome to our show thank you so much seema and thank you so much deepma for having me on this show this is amazing and i'm really excited to be here so thank you so much for that and yes let's talk about that advertisement <laughs> yes. yes that advertisement somehow <laughs> seems to be made for mula for women even though it's a paytm ad yes. and i don't know how many of the uh, our viewers have seen that ad but it uh, so let me just give a little introduction about what that ad is all about and so they they've done a social experiment where they have certain men and women who are standing uh, in a line and they are asked questions and uh, as they are asked questions they need to either step forward or backward depending on whether they agree they have done that or not done that right, right. so so they begin by talking question uh, asking questions like have you uh, learned how to uh, uh, ride a bike in school yes or Uh, so have you do you know how to cook or do you know how to iron your clothes and those things and they as they gr- uh, keep asking question they start asking questions like do you know what this difference between a mutual fund and an sip do you understand what sip really means do you file your own taxes do you know what the gold rate is today do you, uh, have you ever done your own insurances 
And as the questions start going more towards the finance part of it, you see women start stepping backwards. Yes. And at the end of that, there is a huge gap between men and women where the men are forward and the women are back. Right. And that's where it began, where to, women start seeing themselves and they start wondering, when did all this happen? When was it in their life that they started thinking that finance is not for them and start, you know, kind of delegating that responsibility or giving that responsibility to the men of their house? Right. And when then the later they actually asked these questions to the women and they felt, they felt sad. Some of them felt sad. Some of them felt that, you know, they felt awkward to see them, themselves behind. And it, right. that's when it kind of hits you. Yes. You know, when you really see yourselves in a back position, I mean, we continuously talk of equality. We continuously yes. say that we are equal to men. We are equal in everything. And we are professionals, right? We are working women. We are women who who are otherwise conducting themselves in the in an equal fashion to men, right? So right. Whether, whether it's... Uh, you're a doctor, you're an IT professional, you're an engineer, you're a designer, you're an architect, you're like everything. Right. But do you know finance? Are you taking care of your finances? That's when the yes. entire thing changes. Correct. And so Correct. I thought, and that's the whole genesis of Moolah for women, actually, where in fact, my tagline is that Moolah aims to make this social conditioning for women go that finance is not for them. Yes, yes. absolutely. And that I think it's probably so a blog. powerful, uh, Meeta, sorry, Seema. That is so powerful to me because that's exactly what happened to me in that ad was all of a sudden, I realized that when did financial literacy stop being or what, why was it never considered a life skill? Yes. Ironing your clothes is a life skill. Learning to cook is a life skill. Going off to college and school and being independent in your transportation, learning to drive in the previous generation for women has been a life skill that has been accepted. Then why is it that our conditioning of women has still not changed with the financial literacy? And that's where we do it with imperfect parenting, where now we have to take it a step further and say, kids will do as you do. Kids will do what they see. They are not going to say, oh, you know, mama is telling me I should know my finances, so I should know my finances. They're going to think, does mama know about her finances? Right? So I want to kind of talk a little bit about that. And I love how we talk about the triangle where we say the first conversation is the will. Yes, none of us is superhuman. No one is immortal. Here's what we are planning, doing and planning so that you guys don't have trouble. So that's, I love that that's the first layer. Of the and, and one additional thing to what yeah. uh, Deepma just said, uh, which I think is very relevant, is that there are two very clear and critical stakeholders uh, involved in the life of a child. One is the parent and the other is the school system, right? So we don't do this very essential life skill, neither in school, nor do we talk about it at home. Because the responsibility at home goes to the father or the husband or, or the male member of the family. Women are not taking uh, the uh, initiative for some reason. Uh, and they're being reticent about, uh, you know, taking up financial planning as, as a superpower for themselves. Uh, slowly, slowly, that thing is changing uh, with people like you, Mita, who are sort of pushing and uh, advocating the idea of women getting empowered in financial planning. But even at home, how many of us parents sit down and say, uh, beta, I'm going to talk to you about a financial plan that we have created. We don't discuss these things, right? And the thing that Deepma talked about, the will. Will is actually a financial tool. It is not a conversation around death. Like she said, everybody dies. So talk a little bit about uh, why this, this kind of reticence is there in a school system where it is not included as part of the very important life skill. And why are we not talking about it at home? In your opinion, what do you think is the reason? Superb. Thank you so much for these very, very important questions, Seema. So the thing is, like Deepma said, and like you said, it's a life skill. Money yeah. is needed from the day we are born. Correct. Till the day we die. Absolutely. Right? 
ironing clothes may not be needed but but <laughs> right you may not stay you'll be fine if you don't know how to iron your clothes but if you need money from the day you're born till the day you die yeah and still schools don't teach this important life skill right and of course there is a reason behind it and this is a larger if i can say it's a larger scheme amongst the rich people and the wealthy people because of which they do not want the the normal class of people to really understand too much of finances because that's what gives them that superior superiority over the others Correct. right so by having said that there are multiple reasons for that not happening uh, but from a perspective of a woman so first of all understand that both men and women and i often give this example okay so understand that both men and women have not been taught finance in school right now what is the mindset which is created for men and the boys in a house or oh, you have to take care of your finances when you grow up when you grow up you have to take care of your family okay and what is the mindset and the the storyline given to the girls of the house you yeah. have to cook food you have to take care of the family you have to right. you know kind of take care of the children so both of them grow up right okay, now both of them grow up and both of them get married okay so a boy and a girl get married both of them haven't learned finance in school okay yes but they have been given different storylines yes right yes. now because of the storyline think of now both of them in the middle of a sea okay both of them have to reach the shore the boy says that oh my god that's my responsibility to reach the shore so he starts learning how to swim and he starts you know swimming and he has to even take care of the women and so if he can he kind of tries to take them along and see he tries some of them fail some of them pass with flying colors some of them brown or whatever so mm. that's the men mm. what do most women do they will cry about destiny they'll keep looking at the men oh my god please save me please save me please save me because <laughs> i can't swim i don't need to swim i am not meant to swim i am meant to be saved so you keep looking at men who will save you you some men will be really there because they've learned it and they kind of doing they, they kind and whatever it reason be they'll help you swim across and you'll be on the shore but yeah. some of them will not kind of drown because they blame it on destiny they say oh my god we were, there was nobody to save us and then some few others actually said that say that no yeah. yes. i want to reach the shore right i don't care whether the man is there or not and they also gather the will like the man to swim to the shore right and so it's really up to us our programming that makes all the difference right yeah and i think okay, you're absolutely yeah. right that we need to start changing the story the narrative of how people are raised whether it is a boy or a girl the narrative has to change so that it is not clearly defined as your job is to take even if you don't learn it in school eventually you'll have to learn how to take care of finances but that's probably true for women too i mean today we are in a scenario where between deepma and me and even you meeta our kids have gone abroad uh, or uh, they've gone to different parts of the world to study and they are taking care of themselves they are having their own apartments and clearly whether they are a boy or a girl they both have to learn how to handle their finances we talk Absolutely. about that even at college level so this is this is the future and i think the faster we start changing the narrative the faster we start embracing this kind of conversations within our families yes. i think it will be better for our own children uh, yes. so that we raise them to be you know financially stronger and independent and whether they are boys or girls it doesn't matter Right, hundred percent, hundred percent. See now, what you said is so true because it's the you know it's the environment that you create in the house. Yeah. Right. Yes. It, first of all, we find it such a taboo to talk about finances in the house. Yes. Most family, it's not about an Indian family. I think it's all over the world that if a if a kid asks you, pa, a papa or mom, how much do you earn? Yeah. So why do you want to know? They'll make, they'll come business. on a defensive, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not yes. your business. Yeah. yeah. And then what happens to the kid? The next time the kid will find it, you know, he will not ask that. He or she will not ask that question. 
Correct. Because now he or she has been given the thought that asking a question about finance is something which should is not entertained in Absolutely. the house. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Meeta, then let's go that one step further and start the conversation about finances, about saving, about how to save. Because I have noticed one thing and it happened in my family too. I mean, hey, we are all imperfect parents here. And when you say it's none of your business, then kids tend to believe that you're the bank account and you're there only for their spending karchi, right? For their expenses while finance is so much bigger than expenses right and so we want to convey that to our children that finances are things that will set you give you freedom they will give you uh, you know an ability to do things beyond what uh, what uh, you've set yourself out to do things like that so i think that conversation like you said it has to be a mindset change everything has to your entire mindset has to change finances will give me freedom i will get save if i save here's what will happen compounding of interest what happens with that sips what happens with that so i think start with how do we start talking to our children about this and how and where and when do we involve them in these decisions so yes thank you uh, deepa for asking that question I, I when you're talking about you know kids think of us as uh, people you know who who are going to take care of their expenses i actually remember my daughter thinking that money com comes out of atm machines yes okay and every time you go your parents can just go to an atm machine take out yep. money now they don't they, they she didn't even relate that oh you have to earn money you know so, right. so she went a step by that whenever i want my money my parents go to an atm machine and they pull out money so it's as simple as that till she realized later in life that hello the atm machine is just a machine which gives you your money back to you right? <laughs> yes yes, so, yes so that's where the, the starting point is right the kids probably don't don't even have an awareness Correct. of how this whole thing operates right yes. so so to, to to begin with to tell them that you know yes savings is important uh, you probably the first thing you need to tell them is the difference between rich and wealth hmm. you know a person who is rich may not be wealthy income does not mean being wealthy it's the saving which makes you wealthy it's not the income right. which makes you wealthy Right. You may be very wealthy, and you may have spent all your money, and you'll never be. You know, you 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 might look rich. You, you may have, have a lot of rich. debt, or you may have a lot of expenses, and yes. you will not have any savings. Yeah. And and to the world, you may look really rich because you 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 have this lavish car, or you're having your fancy watch, or you're fa having a fancy phone, or whatever. But do does that person have wealth? Does yes. he is is yeah. he secure? Is he or she secured? Do they have are they dependent? So there are many factors between, and when a, uh, your kid even asks a question like, you know, a thing like, how much do you earn? Maybe you can ask the question, the, you know, kind of uh, take it in a positive way and say, that's an interesting question. Yeah. Why do you ask? Yeah. And yeah. they may have a reason for that asking. Exactly. Right? They may have seen that, oh my God, you know, I've seen poor people and they don't earn. And so, are we going to be taken care of? Do we have enough to be taken care of? And yeah. maybe they, they need a comfort. Yeah. Right? To say that, don't worry. I think we have enough to be taken care of. Correct. Right? Yeah. Then, and it could be the reason to start a discussion Gosh, on needs exactly. need and wants. And there is there is clear research, and I can say for myself also. I mean, if you if you look at everybody, I mean you do a little survey of 10, 15 couples, and you will find that uh, between the husband and the wife whoever's household finance is a conversation that was always had for example in my household as i was growing up my parents constantly talked about savings they constantly talked about making investments they constantly talked about shares and stocks and insurance and they talked about it all the time uh, and i grew up in that environment and when i met my husband he came up from a completely distinct uh, very different environment where they never talked about finances they never talked about investments they never did actually shares and equities they never there was no such discussion in the house so it was up to me to actually initiate the entire conversation about financial planning in my house because i grew up in that environment which goes to show that if you want to talk about richness, wealth, savings, all of these things, 
first thing is that you need to start talking to your children about it as if it is part of your life it's a very yeah. important part of your life yes, yes. you know if, if you're all science students or if you've st- obviously done science somewhere in school you know osmosis right yes. osmosis basically means that you put a thing in an environment it soaks it up it soaks it in it's a right? transmission yes it, it's something which just goes automatically yes. you don't have to make an effort a Correct. businessman's kid will automatically understand how money works yes okay a musician's kid will automatically know how to create music or a singer's kid will automatically know how to sing it's not that they're trying it's just yeah. because your environment is like that and that's what you said right you, uh, seema that because your environment was that way it yes. was easy for you to imbibe it to soak and, it to and exactly it. why we need to create that environment because that becomes a critical step first step in actually introducing the idea of financial planning to our children right so yeah normalizing it yeah so how do we do that uh, meeta where do we start let's let's go one step one step back so you know like let's look at a typical indian household right so we have our grandparents who we see during diwali or during some festivals they all come and give us some money some aunt gives us some money you know so children sort of grow up and their exposure to money really comes from these little little gifts that they get so you know the parents are aaj tumhara birthday hai let me give you you know 1000 rupees 10000 rupees or whatever and that's how children actually see money for the first time they don't really otherwise like you said they don't even know where it's coming from so now that the children have started gathering all this cash let's let's take an example and actually walk us through what what's the starting point of you know talking where to our children start? about yeah. where do we start from and what do we do exactly so i think thank you again for that question and i always talk about a lot about first of all i'll go even one step backwards to say that when you are kids you learn see read lots of stories yeah you read you read the aesop fables and you you know you've read these stories so you've learned tortoise and hare you've see read the story uh, the crow and the pebbles you yeah. right you you you've read the mango tree how it takes time to grow yeah start talking to them and making relating it to them so mm-hmm. let me give you an example the crow and the pebbles the three parts to it mm. the first what is in fact there are four parts to it the first is the container where the water wants to come up mm. the water that is co- going to come up is the wealth mm. okay the pebbles that you're putting in is the principal or the amount of money you're putting correct okay. I love more this. More the amount of pebbles you put, the water comes up faster. Coming up faster. Absolutely. The second th- second part is the rate at which you're putting the pebbles. The faster yeah. you put the pebbles, the water will come up faster. And the third is the time. The more number of uh, time, I mean, for a longer time, if you put the pebbles, the water will come faster. And yeah. that's exactly the compound interest formula. Perfect. Has, Beautiful. It's got A, which is the amount, which is the wealth or the water. depends on p which is the principal which is the pebbles r which is the rate at which rate of interest or the you rate at which the crow is putting the pebbles right. and the t is the time, time period and the importance of time in compound of compounding of interest is the most important because it's an exponential factor correct and the moment it mean that means that if you put your wealth for 15 years and then if you put your wealth for 16 years it will be disproportionately different higher. Yeah. higher in terms of because the 15 and the 16 because of the sheer fact that it's an exponential factor right and that's the reason the earlier you start putting your exactly. money exactly and and it means which means as a kid yeah why do you have to ha- wait to become an adult to put your money exactly the exactly. second thing would be delayed gratification Th- tell them that if you given a chocolate today Uh, will you eat it or if if you don't eat it i'll give you two chocolates tomorrow yes so things right. like that yes. right yes so uh, the te- hair in the tortoise story what does that teach you it teaches you discipline it teaches you meticulousness it teaches you commitment it it teaches you a uh, focus it teaches don't you give up right yeah. don't give yeah. up so yeah. all those things are things which can actually translate to how you first build the mental makeup of your kid Absolutely. Because by speaking to a kid and saying, "Oh, you must save ten percent," why should I save ten percent? Yeah, don't yeah. get it. Yeah, ten percent. 
Why yeah. should I do a certain thing? And I've been a revolt all my life, frankly. When my parents used to tell me something, I used to say, no, tell me why. If I was mm. used to, would be told to wear a bindi, I used to, why should I wear a bindi? Yeah. You know, yeah. tell me the reason for it. The fact is, at the time that we were there, our parents didn't have a way to find out because there was no internet. The yeah, only thing yeah, to do yeah. was they were just told certain things from traditional point of view and it was taken in a way because what happened was we don't have internet. The only people we are interacting to are our, our relatives, our peers, our friends and all. And our, we don't have that conversation. Will anybody talk to me to tell me ki why, why is a bindi important, right? right and right. I never wore a bindi because I used to say that it doesn't make sense. Way number of years later when the internet came and now everything's on your fingertip, you just click the Google Baba will tell you everything. Yeah. You now know that, you know, the bindi is meant to be a pressure point. And yeah. every day if you touch a pressure point, then you will, there will be certain things which will happen because there is a pineal gland here. There is, you know, there is a logic to this whole thing. Correct. And when you consistently do certain things, it will activate certain things and because right. of which you will take an action. Correct. And when, when you get energized from your inside, Hmm. Yeah. because it makes perfect sense then you're more rested in the process yeah you become and more rested in the process then the yeah. discipline happens then the yes. consistency happens then the commitment happens and then exactly. it becomes your way of life absolutely I love the fact that you're talking about being so honest with the children and yet giving them examples that they can relate to right, right. the crow and the pebbles the, uh, the uh, hair and the, the tortoise all yeah. of them are like stories that are ingrained in our heads now you take a twist and you explain to them why it becomes very very sensible the second thing i loved what you said was and this is for the parents is it actually makes us as parents agree with the fact that we have to start younger and tell the children younger about all of this because the power of compounding so you have to start saving at an early age. So you can't say, yes, sab baate, we will tell you later. Or, you know, you learn it at 25 when you start earning. No, get into the mindset right now. And the third thing that I think is beautiful and which, would, which children would accept so easily is if you said, Bitter, we've talked about compounding, we've talked about saving, we've talked about putting a little away. So this month, I can't give you the bike. Maybe I give it to you next month. Yeah, they will and understand. Because see, right here's now. my income. Here's how much I'm putting in groceries. Here's how much goes in your education. And here, this much I have to put away. So there's nothing left. And children will understand if there's nothing left, there's not going to be those tantrums for the bike or for the uh, and, video and game. Take it, or whatever. take it a step further, Deepa. Think about it. Your kids are on a, uh, the summer vacations are going to start. Tell them to set a budget for themselves. Absolutely. Yeah, Tell them what next... do you think you want to spend on? Mm. Let's fix it for you. Okay. Right. So, so, so they start thinking. Yeah. They start knowing how to create a budget for themselves to say, okay, I want to spend on this. I want to do this. Yes. And then you allocate money and you say that, okay, let's see how you spend. Yes. Right. Okay. So now you, you then also, a, you know, a portion, a part of money say, I have allocated this money for you so that you can do what you want to do. And since you, you step said these things, it should be sufficient for you. Now they start understanding the difference between price, value. They start understanding that, oh my God, things were more expensive than I thought them to be. Or they start looking at prices of things and saying that I didn't even know how much it was yeah. so expensive. I wanted yeah. to go and buy this. Oh my God. And then the conversations become different. Yeah. And I often give one, one more example. Okay, and I'll give you that story. I love your examples. I love how simple. But it reminded me of even like, you know, when bears go into hibernation or or when, you know, there are these squirrels who collect uh, nuts uh, before winter comes in, you know, those kind of stories also we have told our children, right? And wow. we can connect all of those to savings and all of those to uh, okay. money and wealth and all of those things. Yeah, Absolutely. because you you got to gather all those things before winter comes and you know you got to be prepared for the harsh winter for that you have to have your food ready so these conversations we do make uh, and do have with our children but we have we don't make, we the, don't connection. make the connection we yeah. have to start making those connections now yeah and so that's what so i have so many suddenly you know each of those things that you speak gives me so many ideas and so many <laughs> thoughts and and i mean i'm sorry some of them i'll remember and some of them i won't but let me start by telling you two three stories okay the first story 
dinner table conversations there is a oh. there is a parent uh, that that yeah so there are set of parents who are sitting uh, uh, husband and wife and there are two sons sitting with them. okay let's assume there are two sons now the husband loves to smoke okay and the wife is really upset with his smoking habits okay and she says oh you know please don't smoke it's not good for you you know whatever and they're bickering and the kids are looking so what does one kid think one son okay one son has his he wants to be a hollywood actor and he's seen people smoking cigars and he's sm- seen people smoke you know smoke and look really macho and everything and he wants to become like his dad and hold a cigarette like this and smoke like this you know the second kid who's sitting on the same dinner table has had a close friend whose father's died of lung cancer mm. and he decides that he's never going to smoke again so from the same conversation same dinner table conversations different kids take different takeaways correct so it doesn't mean that what you've taught them is what they're going to learn yeah mm. okay what they pick up is mm. their value system it's what clicks them it's their, it's their correct. environment correct. they have a You're- separate environment which is different from yours too they're going to school they're meeting friends they're going wherever they, they, you know some might think that, oh my god you know that one's got a ferrari i also want to buy a ferrari the other one might think that oh my god that person's got a good business i also want to grow my business so it yeah. really depends what you want and what you understand and that's where to first understand where the kid is coming from and then explain the the negative or the positive of it and right. find this is something good that you're doing i'm glad that you're aspirational not make a negative out of no I'm and i had your aspiration i mean especially children when they are in school and so you know that example of you have one child who's very privileged who you know you every time he comes with a new jacket or a new backpack or a new water bottle and they are spending money as if there is so much money lying around and here's your mother who's saying oh we should you know this money i have you know this month i have done a budget so uh, we can't spend money on a water bottle you have to use the same one that you've been using before and then you start the children immediately will equate it to are we poor yeah can we not afford it uh why is it that my friend is spending so much so the, all these influences are constantly there in the face of our children especially today on social media where everybody's life is an instagram life everything is wonderful on instagram because people only post pictures of only happy uh, situations in their life of all their vacations and all the wonderful things that they are doing with their money that children start making those connections and saying if i if my parent is pushing me to save does that mean that we are poor and then that insecurity starts so i think we have to be very very careful about how we project and, and what kind of environment we create for our kids when we are having that conversation around money so that they don't equate it to oh this is leading me to be in a poverty situation or i'm feeling insecure about being financially not uh, very independent or at the same time we we want to push the idea of the value system right what is our value system as a family do we think that we should spend our money on uh, you know lavish bottles and uh, jackets that we really don't need or should we you know save our money there so this is a conversation as a value system a family should come together and have that conversation you what is the value system for their family i think that's the starting point for sure seema you're so right and when you gave that example of uh, you know the bear or the ant saving for this thing i would step one f- think further to do not associate saving with negativity exactly exactly saving you is not a negative for, thing right it's not that oh my god when shit hits, hits the roof i need to save for that i need to save for all the bad things in life right yes. i need to save for the good things in life absolutely exactly. yeah. i need to save to dance in the rain i don't want to save for a rainy day Yeah, right. because money does not define you, but it certainly gives you a lot of happiness. This is what our previous guest had told us that money does not define you, but it certainly brings you happiness. It's like you know, uh, Deepma gave that example last time. One of our students said, uh, "If you're feeling depressed, I'd rather be sitting in a Mercedes and feel depressed than be on a cycle." That's so you know, it's it's like it's that attitude of how you look at money, and I think that's a very very relevant point. Sure. And so, if you think about it, uh, Seema, uh, I also again. you know see these things i mean i of course follow some people on instagram too and instagram and all cannot be bad if you follow the right people right mm-hmm. so yes. it kind of, it yeah. really depends on our kids are social media kids 
it depends on what you give them to follow and what you kind of you know suggest them to follow also Absolutely. there's certain things which maybe yeah. okay follow three things of yours but maybe follow this of what yes, i think yes yes you know so kind of not be overpowering and one of the things that when i did read on social media was that if you think about it it made me think think about bill gates think about uh, mark zuckerberg yeah, yeah. Like all these people think about the the way they dress yeah they're in their tattered jeans they're in their t-shirt which is like just a uh, you know uh, from bought from any uh, showroom it's not like one of the designer louis vuitton yeah they're very simple. yeah very simple yeah very simple dress and they have enormous wealth yeah cut to another person who's like got a ferrari got a this thing and then they have so many loans that i mean boris becker i don't know if you know it yeah boris he was becker a, was a yes. was a tennis player who earned millions but he went into bankruptcy yes which means that it's not about what you earn Absolutely. but what you save Correct. right and and you don't know what's going to happen in life yes right if you spend yeah. everything today yeah what will you say do tomorrow and you don't know whether you're, you're going to have a job tomorrow something might happen things anything can happen so it, yes. Yes. i think the whole idea is to do a reality check with kids Absolutely. but with a positive attitude correct correct I'm not with a negative attitude because otherwise I most people start that. getting scared when you yeah. know the, the whole feeling is anxiety fear scared mm-hmm. they get scared these are the things which people uh, whether it's ma- a man or a woman those are the feelings which are associated with money yeah with fun pleasure abundance you know gratitude those are the feelings which should come to you but they yeah. don't come yeah so so I, again so beautifully about mindset and it brings me back to the classic example of how almost every they say 80 85% of lottery winners hmm. die paupers yeah. right <laughs> because they don't know how to it's not about riches it's about wealth i love how you've made that distinction and we as parents have to make that distinction with our children it's not about money that you're spending today it's about wealth you're collecting to dance in the rain i love that it's really beautiful so, so one question meeta like you know in especially in the indian environment you know when we look at a typical indian household and when we talk about money or finances we talk about mainly oh how much what kind of house you live in uh, you know so your assets so you have a house uh, do you have a lot of gold because the people think that gold the more gold you have the wealthier you are uh, you know then of course you you know what how much money you have in your bank then whether you have made any investments now there are terminologies like cryptocurrency and bitcoins and all these things that are being thrown at us so when when you were talking about that story about the crow and the pebbles i was thinking there's one more element to it which is the type of wealth right so the type of pebbles that you are putting inside the Big one small one right so, so so many different things which is probably one of the reasons why people get overwhelmed and confused that if we have to begin with the talk and conversation about financial planning uh should we be buying gold more should we be buying more you know creating like uh, equity wealth uh, the sip conversation so can we now get into the yeah. the, the how what. and the, the what. what yeah, yeah. Let, let me give you another because story. a lot of people talk like seema said about gold about house real estate about money in the bank in savings and then you know what you would talk about with uh, stocks equity and uh, mutual funds and sips so let me give you a story absolutely deep mind seema as again let me give you one more story so m- my husband and i both drive okay i prefer to drive a little slowly okay and i so it takes me maybe a minute or two more than my husband okay and when my husband drives he drives a little faster he is mm-hmm. gaps are a little lesser in the car before between the two cars and i look ah oh oh why are you doing this why are you doing this you know because mm-hmm. i'm scared about when yeah. he is uh, doing that but he's comfortable and he reaches yeah. two minutes faster okay so each one of us has a risk ability yeah okay and our risk ability defines our investment that we want to put our money in yes we all want to reach the goal we want to reach that place where the destination we want to reach some of us will reach faster some of us will reach slower some of us may have an accident on the way and never reach 
because we want to go faster mm. right and so the fast the chances of your going uh, meeting with an accident if you're going faster are definitely more as compared to yeah. when you're going slower but that doesn't mean that you're not going to get an accident when you're going slow it doesn't mean that if you're going faster you will not have an you will have an accident you could reach the same it's the same thing risk and return are go in the same direction right you will if you are willing to get more returns or wanting to get more returns you will have to take more risks mm -hmm. some risks may land which means that and what does risk in the financial terms means that you may lose your money okay you don't want to lose what you have but when you it, when you select a risky instrument it means that your capital or your own money can get can diminish or get lost right whereas when you take an instrument which is not risky you mm. will not may not earn like crazy you may not earn a lot of money you may earn slowly but your yeah. capital may get saved mm -hmm. right and those are the differences between which you take decisions between of where and so so if somebody asks me where should i put my money yeah i say i can't answer that <laughs> this yesterday i was giving you give somebody giving somebody that example that you i somebody says i want to go to manali is how, how how long will it take me to go to manali and i'll say okay are you in delhi are you in chennai are you in calcutta yeah. where are you from Depends where you are okay. yeah. the second thing is are you taking a train are you taking a bus are you walking yeah. it are you this all these things depend once i understand this now i can tell you where when you will reach manali exactly exactly but if somebody asks me how when how, how much time does it take me to reach to manali I said, I you have know. no idea. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. probably you know better than me. Okay, so so it's the same thing that your riskability. I I don't like to travel in planes. Fair enough. Nothing right and wrong. Fine, take a train. Mm -hmm. Right. You'll just take a little longer to reach Manali. Yeah. Correct. Right. But I like to take a plane. I don't care what happens. Fair enough. Then you may reach Manali faster. Yeah. Okay. You know that there are there are risks associated with the plane. Okay. There are times when you say that, and that's why a diversified port portfolio is also good, right? Correct. You you should also have a diversified portfolio that you don't put all your eggs in one basket Correct. because of rotten eggs it will get the other one rotten. So there are all these examples which you have to give, and at the end of it, gold is very good. Cryptocurrency is very good. Uh, NFTs is very good. Keeping money in uh, in the house is very good. Keeping yeah. money in FD is very good. Keeping money in PPF is very good. Keeping money in uh, you know real estate is very good. Everything is very good. Yeah. How much depends on should you put everything in cryptocurrencies? No way. <laughs> right? Should you put everything in your in your uh, cupboard? No way. Within. depends upon you and what you decide right and and then there can be yeah okay little bit in gold but little bit in real estate maybe i prefer real estate okay more in real estate no i prefer i like to take risk okay more in cryptocurrencies full in cryptocurrencies no way little more in cryptocurrencies probably i want to put in stock market i want to put in a debt fund i want to put in an equity fund i want to put in a hybrid fund i want to put it in in large cap i want to put it in small caps i want to put it in mid caps really depends on apart from that there is time frames is whether you want liquidity there are many factors or age and everything right yeah. which which yeah. determine what is the investment bucket you're going to use that and is. that depends uh, that re so there is no one answer right but when when right. seema you said yes real estate gold stocks sips mutual fund all are good investments correct so is it okay to say that uh, uh, you know the general rule of thumb is that you should not put all your eggs in one basket of course depending on your risk averseness you can certainly do that but it would be good to distribute your uh, you know your wealth in different uh, maybe areas of investment and you can then decide based on your risk ability where you want to put in more money so for example if your risk averseness is very you know you are not very risk averse you want to take some chances you are a young 20 21 year old person let's take maybe three four people at different stages of their life and see what risk averseness they are at so for example a very young person who is just start, starting out their work uh, starting out their job uh, probably will think okay i got 30 years you know maybe 30 more years before which i will actually need a 
huge chunk of money for my retirement and my travel and whatever big big expenses so i have got i don't have any risk averseness i am willing to take a chance i am willing to gamble with my money maybe that person will decide that i'll put more money in the stock market because the stock market is extremely volatile so you know do would you give is that like how do you approach based on the age and the so i understand what you are saying that yes it all depends on each person but let's take a general uh you know population and then take beautiful take question it. seema and i love that question and i am going to give you an answer to that which will probably open your eyes okay <laughs> okay so so the thing is that the you know what warren buffet yeah is, you know who warren buffet yes right? yes warren buffet says that he doesn't believe in put all your eggs in one basket ah he believes put your egg in one basket okay all your eggs in one basket and why once you have the knowledge once mm. you've done your research once you're picking a good investment once you're sure think about the car, why is my husband driving faster because is he risk is it a risk it's his ability because he's driven so much mm. he's driven more than me he knows the road better than me he knows uh, he can uh, his his senses are quicker he can understand things faster that's the reason he's taking that road so to me it's risk but to him it's it's comfort yeah correct because he he's going from a position of knowledge and strength mm. yeah belief in his self belief yeah self belief also comes one could be so he might be just enjoying right? going faster there, there might be somebody who gets very worried when you go fast and there might be some people who really enjoy the idea of going faster so the person yeah. who does goes fast because he, he if he doesn't know the road he's stupid he will land up having an accident okay by god's grace and his destiny he may not have an accident but the chances of his having an accident are surely high yeah he's, it's a lottery that he's taking he let me i love to drive let me drive mm. but a person who's doing it from his knowledge strength ability to do certain things because he knows a formula one guy has trained mm. he has trained to go fast and then he can go fast and the chances of him hitting success is far higher Mm-hmm. Despite the fact he's going at super high speeds, true. Mm. So the uh, the difference risk is a factor of knowledge. Knowledge, mm. yeah. How much do you understand? Yeah. Calculated risks you're talking yes. about. Yeah. And the more you are able, and then you can put your money in cryptocurrencies. Fair enough. I want to put hundred percent, but the common man doesn't understand these things, and that's yes, why they told to the diversify problem. their that's portfolio. The yeah. So, okay, you understand limited, so don't put all your eggs in basket. And there are so many jargons. It's like technology. If you're not a technical person, and the jargons that you hear all the time are so overwhelming that people get like, okay, wait, I don't understand. What is this? What does this mean? nfts what is that you know like what equity what is like people get overwhelmed by stuff that is not commonly talked about either in school or even in the household right so given that of course you can always empower yourself by you know getting the knowledge for it you know you run a lot of classes for for people uh, you know who want to get kind of get gather that knowledge about uh, finances and and make themselves a little bit more empowered but let's be frank in the practical sense most people really don't understand half the things when it comes to financial jargons and which is why they take the decision okay okay since i don't understand it very well i'll just distribute it and i want yeah. somebody like warren buffet of course his, his entire life has been dedicated to the stock market so his understanding and level of uh, knowledge for finance is much higher and he would not be a fair comparison to the normal people that we see so how do we get started then what do we do first so you are absolutely right seema the fact is that we cannot get that knowledge and i often tell people in mula when they say the uh, you know when women come to me i say you're not going to become a phd yeah okay Correct. don't think you're going to become a phd when i teach you you're going to be just having the ability to ask the right questions exactly and then you're going to use your common sense more rather than getting swayed by somebody else because now you know how to ask the right questions because you understand the basics yeah. but you're not going to become a phd and that's why a professional is a professional correct absolutely and that's the reason that you need to go to go to a professional to to invest in your thing rather than doing your own little little investment do it for fun or do it for a little bit of understanding and learning but don't be stupid to put all your money yourself 
So yes. what what uh, give us some examples of some of the good questions that a person should ask because I think that's that's a great way to start. Like what should I think about when I'm talking about financial planning for myself? What are the right questions to ask? And for that, I'll tell you to join Mula. Because the right questions, <laughs> love it. You know, yeah. because the right questions are multitude. Yeah, yeah. it's like and we, we would can like I, can tell... you, again. Give me. I'll give you the same example. Yeah. Okay. You're going to Manali, and and Deepma is going to uh, uh, Kolkata. Are the questions the same? It can't be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The questions are different depending on a lot of factors. Correct. And so I can't have standard questions. I mean. If you don't understand what is what a difference between a, a debt and equity is, correct, correct. Okay, it starts with that. If you don't know what a IPO is, you don't know what a stock market is. If you don't know what a SIP is, if you don't know what a mutual fund is, if you don't know what a large cap is, if you don't know what a mid cap is, if you don't know what an insurance is, if you don't know what a deductible is, if you don't, if you don't know what a capital gains tax is, if you don't know what is revenue income, how how many questions can I ask? Yeah. So yeah. a basic literacy is essential. essential. Yes. And we would like to tell most of our viewers that, uh, you know, Meeta has actually been very generous. She's actually sharing with us some of her tools, uh, which you can access. And we'll be sharing information about that at the end of this conversation. Uh, mm -hmm. You can actually fill out a Google form and she'll be sending you some more details and you can certainly join her, uh, her program. Uh, so, you know, thank you. She has you. a fabulous uh, ebook that is yeah. really Which very think... informative. So I would love to, uh, uh, yeah. to plug that. But Meeta also, what I was thinking was, what is the point then where we need to consult a professional? So we, we, go, we educate ourselves and our children up to a point. Mm. And then because I have, I have been a victim of this where you have a lot of people. Uh, nowadays, sometimes I'm thinking even some of the bank, uh, uh, bank people are kind of pushing you into um, investments that may not necessarily make the most sense, especially insurance based uh, uh, investments. So mm. I think you are very right when you say, Yes, do your due diligence, but contact a professional also to make sure that you're doing something that works for you and not works at making money for the for the bank or for the investment firm that is offering you this wonderful rate of return. So what is that point that we need to kind of say, okay, you know, now I need a moolah. So the fact, thank you, Deepma, for this question. And I, you're absolutely right in asking this question because the other day, this lady who had no idea about finance and uh, asked me that, do I go to a financial advisor? I said, mm -hmm. no. Because if you go to a financial advisor without understanding anything, then the financial advisor will do whatever he, feel, he or she wishes to do. And yes. is that what we, the purpose is? It's not about him it's or her, it's about you. Yeah, because even if they make a recommendation, if you really don't understand the basic terminologies and the basic okay. understanding of finance, there is no point in just nodding your head and saying, yeah, yeah, okay, fine. They, yeah. Because you know, they'll say, oh, we think that this mutual fund is a great mutual fund to invest in. Yeah. Uh, and you are like twiddling your thumbs and saying, okay, if you say so, and you completely blindly trust your financial advisor and you just kind of go with whatever they say, which is what happens to most of us because we are so like not clear about or not, uh, you know. Let empowered. me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Okay. Yeah. You intrinsically like to go to the, to a beach to go for a holiday. Okay. You love to go to the beach and you, over a period of time, you understood that you like, you're more of a beach person. Mm. But now, before you go to an advisor, you, you don't know it about yourself. You, you have a feeling that you like to go to a beach. Okay, but you don't know it about yourself. Okay? Right. Now you go to a travel agent and you say, I want to go for a holiday. Okay. He think he loves to go to hill stations. <laughs> okay, now he sends you to a hill station. And then you say, but I don't like it here. I didn't have fun. What has he done to me? He has wasted all my money. I wanted to go for a holiday, but he has wasted my money. I just don't like it. It's so cold here. Because you wanted a summer vacation in a, you know, in a nice beachy place. Yeah, yeah. So yes. what you're saying is that it's important to, no, you no. have to have your conversation with your financial advisor about what your financial goals are. 
what is it that you want to what what is it that you are aspiring for or what are you looking for uh, for example if you are a family of four and you have two children who are eventually going to go off to college maybe you want to save some money for that or do you maybe you are planning to buy a house or maybe you are uh, planning to look at your retirement or some health concerns are there and so you may want to have some medical investment so all of these goals that you have and in what stage of your life you are and what your risk ability all of these factors are going to be very very important in determining whether you want to go to a beach vacation or you want to go to a mountain <laughs> so that knowledge you must have and you must discuss that with your advisor so, so you are absolutely right seema but i'll step one one step back to say before going to an advisor you need to first have awareness awareness not only about yourself yeah. but about the products what all is available what's available what is the, what is the difference right okay what does a beach vacation mean yeah. what does a, 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 a vacation in a hill station mean right so what right. does debt mean what does equity mean why is debt uh, safer than equity what, what is a large cap what's a mid cap why should i if, if i invest in large cap what is the problem now tomorrow if a person comes to you say that okay i want to invest my money and i want liquidity you can get liquidity in a you know that means the ability to sell and uh, get your money back in a lot of instruments yes now if you don't give clarity to the financial advisor the financial advisor will first use his brain or mm -hmm. use something which is more profitable to him absolutely yes. yeah right and that's what they do and they the thing is remember one thing about financial advisors they won't tell you they they won't they, they're not allowed to say uh, uh you know they're not allowed to lie if i can say they're not allowed to lie mm. but they can camouflage the truth mm. to make it appear bigger than it is okay it's like the rear view mirrors mm. okay they just look closer the things yeah, look no, closer they... than they are right so there's an optical illusion so they they so let me give you an example i actually this is a real thing which happened to me so there's a relationship manager who comes to me he didn't know i was a finance person he comes to me and he said madam bahut acha hua hai 10 saal tak aap khali itte itte 1 1 lakh rupya dete rahe yes theek hai aur phir 10 saal ke baad aapko zindagi bhar itte paise milenge some 15 years tak itte paise milenge it looks like a damn good thing i was a victim of the same thing <laughs> okay. yes and then i did my i said it's too good to be true darling too good to be I true i came back home i put it what happens is the first 10 years you keep putting money it doesn't give you any interest hmm. in the 10th year it starts giving you some money for the first 10 years what are you doing you're putting your money without interest if, when i did a calculation if i put the same amount of money in my bank account at fd i was not getting even my fd returns what this guy was saying over that thing so it looks like what is he doing first 10 years nothing from the 10th year let's assume 15% interest but if you use from year 0 to year 25 uh, then it becomes to less than 5% yeah now he is not told you that he is told you 15% from the 10th year onwards correct but you lost you lost all that interest in the first right? 10 so years so overall yeah. overall you're getting less than 5% yeah. if i put the same thing in an fd i'll i'll get more yeah. money than that yeah so if you don't understand yeah you yeah. will be continuously made a fool of Absolutely. so that's a very very important point that i think that the first step is to really empower yourself with some financial knowledge so tell us where like i mean i know mula is is obviously offering the courses but where where can a, where should a person start from and another thing uh, say we we talked about you know how children are getting uh, money from their grandparents and they've accumulated maybe 10000 20000 rupees in their bank account and maybe the parents say okay chalo beta we open a bank account what what can we do with that how do we get our children involved in uh, maybe uh, the first step towards financial planning what can they do apart from our conversation our value system all of those conversations of the stories that we talked about how do we now go to that next step of okay you got 20000 in the bank 50000 in the bank what do we do with it so um, give us some advice on that meeta i have 20 20 things which is again have again come in my head but again <laughs> so the first thing uh, let me tell you is that let me give you a one minute talk on moola okay before sure. i even yeah so moola is aimed for women who just don't know even the 
the basics mean even the the f of finance i mean they just don't know anything about the finance world okay mula starts from that point hmm. the second thing that mula does is because we know i know that and after a lot of research i found that women don't want to be some women feel that they are not technologically savvy some women feel they don't have time because they have they're multitasking they have too many things to do they go to office they take care of house they care of kids this that they don't have time so the whole and and to kind of go for structured courses and all that it doesn't make sense that's the reason mula is created like a vitamin pill it's the whole idea about mula is that you just read 2 minutes per day something it comes on whatsapp it's the most ubiquitous way you know everybody has a whatsapp the whole day we are scrolling on our whatsapp women look at messages all you do is every morning a whatsapp message pops up on your screen you hmm. read 2 minutes of it any time you having your cup of tea have a, read it you going to bed just before that you read it or whatever but have a disciplined time and read it every day and every topic of finance which you would never i can assure you on this earth that nobody is going to give you finance in every possible dimensions in the most simple way jargon free simple really really common sense and, and at the level of a sixth standard mm. okay so like i said things like you know i mean questions which you'll never never find an answer to if you go to google you'll be more confused okay because nobody explains finance and i can i can guarantee you that i mean it's like something which i can yeah. actually it's my usp to say that i make finance the way nobody makes finance okay simple so so having said that the idea about mula is that once you have that make your kid read it with you so the kid is now getting empowered because he's he or she is seeing his mom read it and he's saying you're having a conversation with that so once that okay mm-hmm. that's so lovely. that's the reason yeah. that where where mula comes in because not only are you reading it your kid is also reading it and yeah. then you start talking on the table and your husband's reading talking about it and now he gets interested that oh my god my wife is now talking about this to a kid and maybe she's saying something right or wrong and i must butt in so he starts talking about it too and the whole family starts talking about it and there is a bigger thing now having talked about mula of course there are many more things about mula and i'll be happy to talk more about it later but now to come to your question now mm. the kid is interested okay yeah. now, that's the position now you say okay we have 10000 rupees how much do you want to you know let's keep the first let's keep the first uh, uh, 10% or 20% the more we want to keep aside and let's start putting in sips and then maybe you can match matches fund the more the i'm giving you got 10000 whatever you keep aside i'll match it make now, it interesting yeah right now yeah. now now you're matching it and you're make, making it double for that kid and maybe you put an sip put it in a mutual yes. fund let him or her see him so the first money. step is that you know you have yeah. you have an income and then you take a percentage out of that as part of your saving and then that use that as your investment that's what you're saying so yeah. that's so the first you, message you are giving yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so the other thing is the mango tree example okay now yes. what happens is that the kid is now put his his or her money into the thing and it think what mom i put my money nothing's happening nothing's to it nothing's happening yeah well, or it might have fallen my daughter let me give you the example of my daughter i told her she's in the us she's 25 she's like uh, you know she just got a job i told her start investing she put her money in all the blue chip companies in the us and f- unfortunately she put it just before this market crash it's going down suddenly all her money goes down yeah and she said mom 900 dollars down what are you doing you know i could have paid my month's rent out of this and you're doing yeah. so yeah. you know you have to also tell your kid to yes. that there is a risk return there's a market there those things there can be fluctuations so when over a long term then i told her don't look at it you're 24 25 you have 30 years to go in 30 years a facebook or a google will do good Yes. Yeah. Don't worry about that, right? So, yeah. so it's the same mango tree example to say that the once a mango tree is planted, it may not show a root or shoot for days, for months. Forget about the fruit. I mean, yes, yes. even the yeah, exactly. And it takes then time. Then one day, one day when it comes, which will be eight, ten years down the line, you'll have enough and more fruits. Correct. Yes. 
and that's, that's the t that's patience. the power of compounding yeah. and that is that is a very important message to give to our viewers also that it is not something that's going to happen overnight it's not like you you put it in the stock market or you even anywhere you made an investment the return is not going to come for a while so you this is a game of patience you know this is the hare and tortoise story you, it's a game of patience you got to be very very patient and you got to wait for that tree to actually blossom and then then the fruit to come out so let's let's be very clear about that that financial planning is something that takes time and that is why you got to start it early you got to start early so that you get those 20 30 years to actually receive the benefits of actually planning uh, for your finances yeah i love that thank you so much meeta for i first of all doing something or saying something in a way that Seema and I are so passionate about and that is storytelling. <laughs> the minute you do everything in the form of a story, it becomes, it becomes so easier. much clearer, clearer, it becomes so real. Then you talked about the power of conversation. Again, something that Seema and I are super, super uh, uh, passionate in fact, about. In fact, we have a product called the Conversation Cards, which conversation is a set of cards. 100 cards. And actually, we do have some questions about finances in that. So Actually, I wrote good. down over here, you talking about it, I wrote down over here, why don't we start a deck for financial conversations yeah. at the dinner table? So I'm thinking about that. So that's beautiful. The other thing that you did is you demystified the concept of finance and money and wealth, wealth, riches and all of these, with all of these analogies, which are going to stick. And that's beautiful. And also with bringing our children in, because I know I have talked to my daughter and my son both, who are just starting out on their savings journeys and their uh, financial journeys, is the marshmallow experiment, right? Where the power of delayed gratification. And they've both learned about that in psychology. So now they know that children who were able to wait for two marshmallows yes. were, are the ones 30 years later who seem to be more successful. So you have to wait for the return to come. You can't be checking your thing every single day and say, mom, it's not working. I'm not getting any interest. It's not growing. It's not, you have to give the power of compounding at least 20 years to kind of kick in. So these, these demystifications that you've done for us have been so valuable. I've loved our conversation. Thank you so, so much. Everyone, viewers, please, Go ahead and sign up for um, on the Google form to get your free ebook. It's very, very useful. And we'll put in information on how to contact Meeta and, uh, uh, you know, how get to get more empowered. Her. Yeah, get more get empowered. More empowered. Yes. And I think Let's I think it happens. Yeah. And I love that's why we love this, this program where we meet people like you who are very passionate and whose goal is to actually empower other people. Uh, that's a common uh, mission that we we kind of share. So thank you, Meeta, for this uh, opportunity to actually talk to you about this. You made things so simple. You are a great storyteller, and uh, we love we love chatting with people like you. So you know, come back and you know, let's maybe talk about you know making that deck of cards uh, for financial planning, and maybe we can we can uh, distribute it to our target target over here. So thanks, Meeta, and thank you everybody for tuning in, and uh, you know, send us your questions. Do check out uh, Meeta's Google form, which will which you will see on our post, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you, lovely ladies. Thank you for this opportunity. Thanks, Meeta.